Okay, let's now have a look at the solutions uh, for the exercises that you were just working on. Uh, the first couple of questions just ask you to create pairs of orthogonal vectors. There are a lot of different ways that, that you could do this. I just have an example solution here. V1 is 0, 1. V2 is 1, 0. When we take the product, we get a product of, of zero. And so all I did simply, if you can, uh, you know, envision plotting these, this is, you know, a vector that goes from zero, zero up to zero, one. Uh, and so this would go straight up from the origin on, the, on a graph. Uh, this one will just go straight to the right on a graph. And so they're, they're perpendicular. There are lots of different ways you could do this. Um, if, if you started with something a little more interesting than zero, one, let's say you started with two, five or something, um, then, of course, you could just uh, invert the numbers and invert the sign as well, and you would end up with, uh, with uh, uh, an orthogonal pair of, of vectors. And so what I mean by that is, you know, let's say you started with, you know, just, just for example, let's say, uh, you know, one vector was 2, well, let's go with 2, 5. Uh, and so you could flip those around right? 5, 2. And so this would be, you know, 2 times 5 is 10, 5 times 2 is 10. And so we just need to make one of them negative, And then we'd get, we'd get the, uh, the sum of zero. So anything like that. Uh, the idea was just to get you thinking there about that and kind of thinking about how those numbers interact and, and see if you could pick up on, on any patterns there. Same with creating a pair of orthogonal three-dimensional vectors, a little more complicated, but you could do something fairly simple like 0, 0, 1 and, and 1, 1, 0. Uh, zeros are handy in an exercise like this because their product, obviously, with another number is going to be 0. So you can use that to your advantage. I'm really just kind of pulling a trick here to make sure that all of these sum or all of these products will be 0. So when I sum them up, uh, it's, it's 0. But you could obviously do, do more interesting things. Again, the idea was just to get you thinking there. Uh, on number 3, we'll do some modeling here. So let's load the Baseball 2018 data set. So we'll go ahead and load that file, uh, and we can have a, a look at baseball just to kind of review what that looks like. And, and the, the uh, other case, so we said games is equal to wins plus losses. The other case where there's a linear combination is our diff is a combination of runs and runs against. So our diff is a linear combination of runs and runs against. Specifically, uh, our diff is equal to runs minus runs against. Okay, runs minus runs against. So we can write this, or, or you know, you can see it here. 1.4 is equal to 5.4 minus 4. 1.6 is equal to 4.9 minus 3.3, and, and so on. So that's what we mean when we say our diff is runs minus runs against. So if we want to write that in the form of V3, uh, you know, V3 equals some combination of the other two, it would be our diff equals, well, it's 1 times runs plus negative 1 times runs against. Uh, so, or we could, you know, you could write it as runs minus runs against, or if we want to think in terms of the a sum with two coefficients, it's 1 times runs plus negative 1 times runs against. And so that's how you get, uh, that's how you would express that uh, as, a, as a linear combination. Okay, and so we want to fit now uh, two models, win percent onto just just V3, which would be R diff, and then win percent onto runs and runs against. Uh, and so we'll go ahead and do that. Let's just do the first model will be uh, LM, a linear model of runs onto R diff using the baseball data. Okay. And so we'll just take a look at mod one. We don't need all the output, but we'll look at just the coefficients. And so we have you know, 4.45 and some change as the intercept, and then about 0 0.46 as the R diff coefficient. And then we'll run mod two is a linear model of runs onto, um, excuse me, uh, R diff. I just realized I, this model should be win percent, win percent onto R diff. And so the, the, Coefficients there are 0.5 and about 0 0.97. Sorry about that. And so this one should be win percent onto runs plus runs against. Run plus run runs against using, again, the baseball data. Okay. And so we'll have a look then at the coefficients from mod 2. 
Okay, and so uh, we get about 0 0.51, and then the coefficient for runs is 0 0.096, and runs against is about negative 0 0.098. And, and some change. And so um, so we do get two different models. The intercepts are fairly close. Um, and then the, the coefficients on R diff and runs and runs against, uh, we're asked to kind of uh, describe the relationship between the, the, the coefficients. And so um, a couple of things, the, the coefficient uh, or the intercept term is approximately 0 0.5 for each model. Uh, and and why why do we think that the intercept term would be about 0 0.5? Well, let's think about what that intercept term represents again. Remember, the intercept term is going to be about the average of your independent variable or of your dependent variable. Excuse me. So the intercept term here is about 0 0.5 for each model because uh, the average the average win percent is. Uh, is 0 0.5. And the reason for that is, on average, half of the games are won, which is kind of an interesting result and makes all kinds of sense. If you take all the games over an entire season uh, for all the teams, half of them are won and half of them are lost because in every game you have a winner and a loser. So <laughs> when you look at it from total games by team, then half are won and, and, and half are lost. So the coefficient is about uh, 0 0.5. Now, the coefficient, uh, this is kind of the more interesting one, the coefficient on R diff from model one, so this is 0 0.097, uh, it doesn't jump right out to you immediately, uh, but if we think about this linear combination, um, th then this becomes fairly interesting. Let me show you here, maybe some of you, maybe you, you, you picked up on it, um, but the coefficient on R diff is equal to the weighted average, the weighted average, of the coefficients uh, for runs and runs against. It's equal to the weighted average of the coefficient for runs and runs runs ag against. So uh, let's just say explicitly 0 0.097. Okay, we'll just kind of truncate these. 0 0.097 is equal to is equal to the weighted average using uh, the coefficients from this linear combination, actually. So let's let's say that 0 0.097 is equal to the weighted average of, of these two coefficients. All right, and so what that means is if you take 1 times 0 0.096, so we take 1 times this guy, and we add to it negative 1 times 0 0.0, negative 0 0.098, right, this guy, uh, and then divide by 2, then we would get 0 0.097. So let me just show you that this does, in fact, work. Uh, and so we'll run out this calculation. This should be a plus. Okay, so we're taking, remember, this is, this is the linear combination that we described earlier. R diff is equal to 1 times runs plus negative 1 times runs against, right? It's right here. And so you can actually see this play out in the coefficients, uh, which, is, which is pretty neat. Um, oops, we don't need this equal sign. All I want to show you is that this calculation gives us 0 0.097, and you can see that that does actually come out. So it's just kind of a neat result that whenever you, you, we see this linear combination here, uh, it actually plays out in the in the coefficients of of, of the model where the coefficients themselves uh, show us what what the relationship is between R diff and runs and and runs against. And actually, if you if you care to take the time to to see that again, you can go back to uh, you can go back to the example we did in in previous videos for this for this lesson um, and see that when we use that simulated data, you know, with X1 and X2 and X3, it was it was the, the same result. You could do the same thing. Uh, and so here we're asked to compare the fitted values for both models from Part B and comment on the comparison. Uh, and, and so we'll just go ahead and plot uh, fitted values versus fitted values, and then we'll plot uh, the, the y equals x line. And so we can see that the fitted values on these are so, so close. Um, these are 
you know, fitted the mod one fitted values and the mod two fitted values. So, you know, clearly if they were the same, exactly the same, they'd be right on this red line. They're not quite right on it, but they're very, very close. Uh, the fitted values are almost identical. Um, and in fact, any differences are just due to rounding uh, on on the, the coefficients. Um, and you see the estimation on the intercepts. They were a little bit off. They weren't exactly 0 0.5. There was a little bit extra there. And so that really will account for all of the, the variation in these data points. But the two models give, give basically the same output. Um, and now we're asked one last question. Assume uh, in, in, in a data set, one predictor variable can be written as a linear combination of the others. Um, explain in your own words why it's best practice to use the single variable for modeling rather than the other variables. Uh, well, the, the answer, you know, some, some version of the fact that the single variable, okay, the single variable uh, provides all necessary information. Uh, and so introducing introducing the extra variables introducing the extra variables uh, introduces introduces more potential source for error okay and so you know the idea is that if you can use that single variable um, obviously, you know, that's going to be better than using two variables because now you only have to deal with one variable and accounting for the error in that variable or the variation in that variable rather than having to account for the, the extra uh, variation in two variables. Uh, so that, that's just one reason. There are other reasons that maybe you came up with, um, but this really is, is the, the best one. You, you, you want, you know, you just want a single variable to have to keep track of rather than two variables, if at all, if at all possible. All right, that does it for this lesson, and we'll see you in the next one.